So, so Yul Giharo we from have Hondo Boots, the man. Yul Giharo. <laughs> the legend. Oh, boy. My dad is the legend. The legendary Phil Giharo of Hondo I'm, Boots. I'm just the junior. I'm just the junior. Uh, you haven't seen all the toys and all the props that I have below the fold. So I have a big old boot cut out right here. And I didn't think that it would serve the purpose of that question. But if you have a vintage boot, then this was made in June of 1985. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. Six of 1985. Kind of like a tire. It has the <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I guess so. And that, so this cutout, uh, we have boots from the 80s, which don't have the old samples there there's not a left side we only have a right side so it's what we do our cutouts with because they're still ma made the same way <laughs> today so that's, the cutouts are good enough good. for today yeah you the nice thick leather insole yeah I yeah mean. so yeah so basically if i had to describe so what is the old way of doing boots i would boil it down to one catchphrase it's leather on leather so what does that mean? There's always two layers, outsole, insole, or if we look at the vamp, lining and vamp leather. Mm -hmm. If we look at the heel counter, it's about a five iron sole leather heel counter and vamp leather. Mm -hmm. If we look also at the tops, then same thing, lining and the featured leather, the top leather. So mm -hmm. it doesn't ever take more than two pieces back to back. So the traditional way is leather on leather. And uh, just to get to back to your comment. Yeah, the traditional way is, you can see how thick a sole is right there. Mm -hmm. It's about an eight iron sole, nine iron sole. And then the the insole here, uh, it even surprises me how thick this particular boot has it. It's just about as thick as the as the outsole. Usually it's like one iron thinner than uh, than the outsole. And, uh, and that's all it is. The, the other thing you see here is just the uh, uh, steel shank mm -hmm. and the shank cover. That's the other little layer that you see there, which is okay. only for the length of the steel shank. And a steel shank is about three inches, three inches and a half. It also grows with the size. I mean, it doesn't literally grow. There, it just comes in. You buy it in two or three sizes and... Um, mm -hmm. The smaller is for the smaller sizes, the medium is for the medium sizes, and the largest is for the biggest sizes. Because mm -hmm. it's important for your shank not to be too big. Otherwise, it starts to uh, wear down your sole. You, if it was all the way over here, which it would, shouldn't, it could only come up to about here, okay. it starts to wear down your sole. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, because then your ball starts kind of pushing that in. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, the, when the pressure that the ball puts on it, it by then it must be just leather on leather mm -hmm. the uh the steel shank has to be over here where you're uh, higher up in the instep where you're not really um ma making contact with with the ground yeah and i know that's i'm really i really enjoy it too but that's jeremiah craig's favorite thing in the world is the hard leather insole yeah <laughs> yeah well yeah. i, I it's, definitely it's amazing how well it forms to your foot Absolutely. well you call it hard right but we all know that it is flexible but mm -hmm. of course it's not a cushion. It's not right. a cushion. It's right. something that only in uh, uh, time lapse would it seem like a cushion because it would take you several months to kind of mm -hmm. burnish your fingers into there. And it would literally give. It would compress. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, obviously, it's not a cushion. It's, you can hear it. Mm -hmm. it's, it is a hard surface. All right. Well, Phil, I can tell you I've been so excited to do this because when you told me you had the cutouts yes i really yep. want to see toys channel welt and what that's right. all about mm -hmm. and how it's okay. different from you know the goodyear welt that a lot of okay. modern brands use okay all right so uh the important thing i guess another important thing to say about the old way of doing boots is that um you know they they made them with what they had uh you know, even in the 50s, there there wasn't that much options. By 1965, when my dad started, there had been some uh, composite materials and some synthetics already creeping into the boots, but it didn't, you know, amount to much more than 
maybe the insole was a pressed material, a pressed composite, uh, but there wasn't much more you could you could do. Uh, so anyway, uh, so it doesn't take much imagination, uh, but it's still hard to explain. So what I've done here is uh, I've brought in insole to begin with. We're looking at the part where your foot lands right there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is the uh, this is the smooth part of it. Okay, on the back is the flesh, the rough part of the, uh, the rough out, if you will, of the insole. And uh, so the traditional way of making boots is to open up a channel. You open up a channel right here, which goes about halfway the thickness of the insole, halfway the thickness of the insole, and it probably extends to half of this length that you see right here. Okay. The whole point for this channel is so a needle can come in. All right, and the needle, what it needs to do is to join the welt. This is a piece of leather welt. It needs to join the welt to the insole. So this is, again, the part where your foot lands. This mm -hmm. is you looking from the top down to your boots. Mm -hmm. And the welt is where the stitching is going to go so the whole boot can hang on to the sole. So if I hang on to this, we're looking at that, basically. Mm -hmm. You've got, you know, that stitch is penetrating a welt and it's going into a sole. So basically you need to achieve this construction. Mm -hmm. the, um, the welt actually also has a channel. So you have a needle going in through here and you have this little channel where the needle is uh, going to also uh, come out and then it's going to re-enter. And it's going to come out through the channel and it's going to re-enter until mm -hmm. you have basically a welt sewn all around the mm -hmm. boot. Okay. So uh, obviously what you can't see here is the leather upper. The leather upper gets sandwiched. It gets sandwiched right in there. Right. So all of this sewing traps the upper like that. Then this gets forced, bent down. And fortunately, I've got a visual for that. This is a boot, which is lasted, and it has the leather welt already sewn into it. See that? Through this little mm -hmm. channel that we saw in the welt. And it went through the channel, through the channel in the insole. So gotcha. if you can see, uh, let me see if you can see that. There it is. If we peeked in there, and if I had that, you can kind of see the stitches mm -hmm. right there. See? Mm -hmm. So what we have here is you see the vamp leather and you see the lining leather sandwiched in there between the channel and the the welt uh -huh. what you do what you've got to do is trim that really really uh carefully so you don't cut the stitching flush. that you just put in there right flush uh so that's where that's going and the construction is quite simple because once you press this down once you press the welt down, and it has quite a bit of resistance, but there's some machines that, some levers that help you to press this down so that you can very simply glue, in, glue an outsole on there. So this is flush again, I'll borrow that word. And you can see that when I press this down, you've got a nice flat bow right here. So the sole is just gonna land on there there's a little glue to hold it in place, but what you're really going to do, end up doing is stitching it, stitching the sole through here. Um, a lot of people know, th know this, but still worth saying, anytime you see the profile of your sole, there's two layers because there's that welt that we just described and there's the outsole and the stitch that goes from the sole into the welt is what holds this all together. Because we don't do the welt all the way by choice, we could do the welt all the way, but when you don't do the welt all the way, that's the whole point. The whole reason I'll bring the cut out because I sanded this a little bit. That's the whole reason that we have uh, brass nails and wooden pegs. It's because we don't have welt there. We just decided not to have welt there for the look or for the utility, which uh, maybe a legitimate cowboy can speak a little bit better of what the utility is for that. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's what's making up for the fact that we don't have a welt that's sewing everything together. This gets nailed into essentially the insole. 
And uh, if you look at an insole closely enough, you'll see tiny little specks. You won't see it in this cutout, but if from your own boots, mm -hmm. you'll see tiny little specks, especially after you burnish the insole, those tend to kind of uh, come a little bit more obvious. And uh, those specks are where the tip of the brass nails clinch. The last of a boot has a metal plate and it's meant to go all, the, the brass nail is meant to penetrate all the way through the insole and then clinch. That means the very tip of it just hooks down because it mm -hmm. hit metal and came back down. So uh, important not to, the length of the brass nails is important. You can't go too far because then all you would see here is all the metal that came through and clinched. So, so you got to watch that. So at the end of the day, guys, what you've got is leather on leather, like I described. One point I want to make is, and this could be maybe controversial, especially for a lot of uh, the boot makers that are on there that use filler. Mm -hmm. When you don't have a, when you have a boot that you can, uh, when you flatten this welt, you have a totally flat surface here, which is ready for the insole. You don't need anything which acts as a filler. So filler is necessary when you don't have a channeled uh, insole construction because the substitute for a channeled insole, the substitute for the channel is a uh, textile rib that gets glued along this same like trace. A canvas, right? Like a canvas, like a treated textile, like a canvas which gets folded up and glued on here perpendicular. So it stands up like that. And when you have that rib, they call it the rib, then it's time again to sew the welt so that to sew the welt so that you can have that construction. But the welt is using that canvas as a bridge between the outsole and the welt. So not here to criticize that, but you've added textile to a construction that you've added canvas to a construction that the traditional way uh, does not require for there, to, for there to be canvas. So because of the raised profile, I mentioned that the, the uh, rib is perpendicular and about this tall, you leave this cavity here because you've created a raised profile. And when the sole goes on there, you can't leave it empty because then the sole would kind of collapse in there. So you have to find a filler and some people use a synthetic. A lot of boots that claim it as a quality feature use cork. The way we uh, make our boots, we, we don't have any space. We don't have the possibility of putting cork on there. But I would say that's a controversial topic because a lot of quality boot makers are boasting that they use cork. From my uh, understanding, a truly traditional boot would never need it. <laughs> but Phil, what I was going to ask yeah. is when I put your boot on, I immediately saw, and I have an area here to show. Yeah. I don't know if I can get it in the shot. Yeah. But the channel well, everything about the boot sits lower. Yeah. You know, I mean, you can even see it in the toe there. Right. Can you explain that, why that yeah. is? Or Yeah, definitely. So uh, that, that is a good observation. It has to do with, uh, if I take you back to the insole, mm -hmm. the fact that this channel is going about halfway through the thickness of that insole. And okay. uh, that means that, um, okay, uh, what should I show you first? I'll remind you that at some point you're gonna flatten this, mm -hmm. flatten this, and then uh, sew the, the sole onto there. So at this point, the position of the welt is already halfway through the insole. Okay. So right where you see this stitch, we've already got half of the insole submerged here. The other half of it is raised here. Another way to say it is if you take any boot that you have and you press down the, um, the vamp like this, you can see how much um, insole is sticking above the fold. Okay, yeah. and bear in mind that there's a thick um, vamp leather and lining, uh, making it look a little thicker there. Gotcha. So um, when you have the rib on the insole and you've raised that profile literally about, about that much. Yeah. The rib could be that tall. 
then the entire insole is sitting above the wealth. Gotcha. By the time, uh, let me see. Uh, so it would be sewn like this, sewn like that to mm -hmm. the rib, uh, sewn like, <laughs> I get really mixed up. Anyway, sewn something like this to the rib and then pulled down. So what you end up with is always the uh, insole sitting above the welt, which raises the entire profile of the yeah. boot. So which that's that's what the um, that's what the rib forces you to do. They're made the way boots used to be made. So tradition. Let's go with that. So tradition is another value. Um, we're at a point in you know history, and I've said this in in a few other interviews where. Back in the 80s and 90s, you would double down on knocking down the brands that if you split them down the middle like this, you could totally expose them for the sham that they were. The ones that weren't all leather. And even Tony Lamo still had the leather content back then to be doing that. And it was kind of like the, the way to advertise. But that changed. Definitely, I would say as a 2000, you can split open an area and be pretty impressed and pretty proud of all the space age technology which is in there. That's how I would describe it if I was selling an area. Look at these nine layers of space age, techn space age technology. NASA invented that one, like the fifth layer. That's really cool and that's really important. So what value is there to having a boot that is traditional, if that's the value? And I think it just comes down to just knowing that you're wearing it, you know, have a boot that is made in a space age manner and have a boot that's made like Hondo is and just feel good. Know what you're wearing. You're wearing a piece of heritage there.